let's look at the demonstration of the facilitation. So there you would like to start functional program. So first of all, I will see how I uh, show you how to install the Scala in your computer. So basically, I use Docker to do that, so that is much easier. So, so what you have to do, you in your computer, you create some directory somewhere, and then you put these two files into the directory. So those two files I will upload to the LMS. Uh, so you important one is this file. Let's have a look on this file. It, it is called as a Docker file. And the Docker file define what we want. So I say here, I want a base Ubuntu image and I want to update this and install uh, Vim, the editor, JIT and the Scala to start functional programming. So all the Docker commands which need to build those image and use this image are given in this text file. So it tells which commands you have to type in order to uh, build and use this Docker image, right? So those two files, I will upload to the LMS. We just download that, put it into some directory, and obviously you have to install Docker. So you visit docker.com website and install a Docker in your computer. It doesn't matter it's Windows, Mac, or Linux, right? After that, you create a directory and put those Docker files there and execute and build your Docker image. In order to build that image, you have to type docker build minus t and give a name. Commands are given, maybe I copy and take it from that. So you, then you can do the same. So this is the command where you want to build the uh, image. So I copy that here and paste it to the form. So it say docker build minus t and you give a name for the ima image you're going to build. Let's name it as Scala and put dot to refer into the root directory. When you put that and run it, it will build an image with Scala. Uh, so since I have already run that previously, it says everything is up to date, but if you run that first time, this command first time, it may take a few minutes to fetch the Ubuntu image and then to fetch these other, other images uh, from the internet. So obviously you need to have an internet connection. So it might take five minutes roughly to fetch all those images and uh, uh, from online websites and then build the image called Scala for you. Then you, after you build that, you can run either this command or that command to create a, a Docker VM on your computer or what you call Docker uh, image. Uh, after you create the image, you run that image. So I run that image using that. It mount my local root directory into the home directory of the image. And then using name, I say the name to that running image. And then I use which image you want to run that. So I, my image, I create Scala, so I give it Scala here. So after I run that, I uh, I got there because I, I already run that. So I image, so if I am already running the image with the same name, I have to remove that. Thus, using Docker RM command, I remove, sorry, uh, my running image. I RN and give an image name we want to remove. And then I can run it. I want to run that build command and then run command only once. So you see the image is run and I got the Linux uh, Ubuntu prompt. So it's a root directory of the Ubuntu VM a Docker image which executes. I have a shell automatically open to this VM. So when I change to the home directory of that VM, it's actually my home directory of the host machine. It's mapped my host machine home file system to the 
an image. So then whenever I save things, it's saved to my local machine. So I can now change to some directory. Actually, where I am running this uh, directory where I have this Docker files you see. So the same file system uh, used by both, right? So it has already this Docker installed. That's what you want to do. So you go to your home directory where the home directory of VM and create some directory or whatever. And you create, go to the directory where you put that Docker file if you wish like that, as I did. And then you start doing program. So you, you can use Scala prompt to do that. Yeah, you type Scala and press it. So it will give you this Scala prompt. So then your program, you can type it here. So for example, if you want to say hello, so you can use print command and say, let's say I want, like hello, says, Scala says I want. So if you want to add two numbers, like add one and two, so Scala says result, it's integer and answer is three, like that. So like that you can use in this prompt, you can practice writing functions. So let's say I want to write a function to add two numbers. How do you do that? So function start with the keyword called definition diff, and then I need to give a, uh, a, give a function uh, name, uh, name for this uh, function. You can use whatever name you wish. Uh, maybe I use a function called sum. After that, I need to give inputs to this function. So maybe my first input is x. And then I need to give the type of this input. I say integer and come on. And my second input is y. I say it is also integer. And then I close the bracket. After that, so I need to tell the return type of this function. So I say return is also integer. Colon and say it is also integer. And then we put equal sign and write the operations of this function. This function simply do add these two numbers. So I say then x plus y. So it create a function which add two numbers. The function name is sum. So how do you use that function? I say sum three and four. This is seven. Then I say sum this one and this number. This is this, like that. So if you want to write a multiplication function, it's simple. Maybe I say multi, and obviously then I have to define inputs. X is maybe integer, Y is maybe integer back, and return is integer. And then it is X multiply Y. This is my multiplication function. So if I use that, no. I say three multiplied four, and there's two. Okay, I want to, let's say, do some function where I uh, multiply x by y and add this x to y. So how do I do that? Maybe for some reason. Uh, so I say then define some function called f1, take x1, y are the integers, like that. And it also return integer. Actually this returning value is optional in the Scala, so I can skip that if I wish like that for simplicity. And after that, I can tell what you want. I want to multiply these two numbers together and add it to the 
I want to multiply these two numbers together. And add these two numbers together. And then add them together. So first of all, what I want to do is multiply x and y and then add to the addition of x and y. Let's say some, some, some function. So I take the sum of these two numbers and multiplication of these two numbers and add them together. If I want to do so, so this is a function which do this. So I define a function called f1. So let's take this name. Let's say I pass two and three to that. Answer is 11 because in there, they multiply two and three together. This is six and to add two and three together we see that it is five and add six to five, answer is zero. So you see there are basic functions. Yes, in this basic function, I can build some other functions. So it's very simple to use the count. So similarly, if you want to write a application which uh, uh, compile and run later on, uh, so I can do it as well. Uh, so let's say uh, I want to write a, a function like a, our Fahrenheit example, let's say uh, I want to kind of like uh, write an application where I convert uh, centigrade to Fahrenheit, something like that. So I can create a file which has those functions and the uh, codes. So maybe I create a program or what you call source code, source file called uh, uh, runheight Fahren dot scala. Extension is scala. So it's, I create a file like that. And then in the Scala, so what first thing what we have to do is create an object. So when you create an object, we should use the name of this object. It's not a class, it's an object. It's a Fahrenheit. So you know in the Java, when you use, want to create a program, it's a class and the class name. Your object and the object name. In the Java, your class name and the file name should be the same. Scala, it can be different, but it's it always good to follow the same convention. So if you create a file with some name, your class name, use the same. If it is different, it works with the Scala, but don't do it. You, you follow the same con concept. So, so since you create a file called parent, parent Scala. So you, you name that object, your name is Farron. So because of that, you create a file called Farron.scala, right? So if you want to do application out of that, there is a keyword called extend. And say you are building application and start an application. This is your application. Application is the object which inherent a main method. In the Java, you know, you have to type a method called static main. So when you extend the application object and create your own object, main method will automatically inherit uh, to this uh, Fahrenheit object. So then you can immediately start writing your code here. So where you want to, let's say, define a function which converting this Fahrenheit, centigrade to the Fahrenheit, let's say conversion function, convert, Okay, centigrade, x is the centigrade. Maybe the variable type is double. A variable is double because maybe we have, should enter decimal numbers as well. And after conversion, it return double. We can say colon and double, or you can skip that for simplicity. You say convert, input is double, output automatically defined by the language itself. That is obviously double. So by putting equal sign, I say what we want to do. We want to do x 
converting Fahrenheit to centigrade. So I multiply centigrade by 1.8, then add 32 to that. Right? This is my function. So then I want to print the value on the terminal, so I say print ln and then convert convert that maybe 35 centigrade to the Fahrenheit. So this will automatically convert 35 centigrade to the Fahrenheit return value being print on the terminal. So this is simple program which convert centigrade to the Fahrenheit. Centigrade 35 into the Fahrenheit. So I save that and fit using the editor. Then I type Scala, Scala C, like Java C, Scala C, Scala compiler, and compile it. Uh, maybe, so I misspelled the name, I guess. Say con V E R T C O R N is missing, you might see here. So that was the issue. Con C O N. That is now should work. It get compiled. Right, then I run that as I run a typical Java program. You get this is in Fahrenheit. It's very simple. So, so that's how we can write a Scala program in a file and compile and run that. So we have a program in this file, and then you Scala C this command to compile and Scala this command to run. So I say we can use if you wish, we can use Java compiler also to run this program because this Fahrenheit when you compile that it creates a class called Fahrenheit dot class and then there is another class created and then three classes created class files because I inherit that, so Scala will automatically create these three files. Let's compile this program into the three class files where it can run on top of the Java virtual machines. So I can use Scala interpreter to run that directly or I can use Java interpreter to run this my Fahrenheit program. If I want to run that uh, with Java, I have to tell them where are these Scala, I see. Yeah, Scala libraries are there, where we have these libraries and so on. You can try yourself. So I have given the commands in this slide set, by slide set. Right. So, so I mainly use the prompt to demonstrate everything and the functions, it's convenient. So for example, if I want to do this Fahrenheit function on my form, I say maybe Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. And then take the double input. And my conversion is this function is equal to Rosa in the values. If you, I say, this is basically x multiplied by one point eight plus thirty-two. That's it. So if I want to use this, just use that like that. So it might tell the answer. So similarly, you can use like that. It tells the 
equivalent Fahrenheit value. So I have given three problems. One problem, first problem I have already showed. So in the two other problems, you should write or implement simple functions. Maybe Scala files. You can first try on the prompt and then you can write functions like that. Fahrenheit does Scala like three functions to solve these other two problems as well. With that also three problems you have to solve and push those function programs to the gym and let me know your repository. Thank you.